Ooh, let me see if I can get in frame. Okay, hey, I thought I'd do a quick video about one of my um, favorite bass players, and he's a guy you don't really hear a lot about on YouTube. Um, this guy's name is Mars Cowan, and uh, he played with uh, Pat Travers' band most famously. Um, he was part of that band, especially in the late 70s, uh, that had Pat Thrall on guitar and Tommy Aldridge on drums, and you know, a lot of guys that are about 10 years older than me, guys that are, you know, in their 50s that came up in the late 70s. Um, this band was really influential on a lot of guitar players, especially, and a lot of bass players. Um, the band that they had is probably, I think, best represented on the album Go For What You Know, which is a, a live album. And uh, man, there's just inc not only incredible guitar playing, but incredible bass playing and, and just great double bass drumming. Um, it's it's a it's a really good album to if you want to really learn how to play. Um, I would say uh, funky hard rock blues bass. Uh, it would be a great album to start with. And uh, I wanted to just there's not a lot of videos about Mars, and I just wanted to. I'm not going to necessarily play any songs that he did. I'm just going to talk about some of the techniques that he did and some of some of his ideas that were influential on me and uh, i would encourage you to to get that go for what you know album and just learn the whole thing because there's there's a lot of really really cool licks and he, he just he he was a uh, uh just comfortable playing over the whole bass neck you know he didn't stay in one spot so uh one of the things he did that i i thought was cool was he would pedal and that means he would, if, if, if the song had an open string, he would pedal. And he would not only pedal with this octave, he would pedal with this octave. Which a lot of times we end up ignoring that, you know, especially on a P bass, so it's the 19th fret. Here is the octave. And like one of his licks was like... You know, it was a lick something like that. So that he he did a lot of pedaling, did that sort of thing. The other thing that he would do, um, he would do octaves, and he he did octaves different ways. And this is where I picked up um, this technique from. He would do just straight fast octave. He'd do straight fast fast octaves, and he would also do doubles. So he would do those sorts of things, and um, that, you know, I added that stuff to my playing through learning those things, and that's how you know that's how we get you know how we let influences affect us. We we imitate what that guy did, and that's one of the things I picked up from him was doing double octaves and single octaves, and being able to move around the neck doing those things. <laughs> Doing different things like that, and uh, it's it's kind of a cool thing that you can add in your playing. The other thing he did, uh, he did double stops, which um, you know are like you know, so using a, a chord and um, using that to accent different things, and lots of different players. Chuck Rainey famously did that too, but uh, I really like the way uh, Mars did it as well, and uh, I, I picked that up from him. Um, he did do some slapping. Most of it was more like was more like a simple type of slap. Um, a thing he did all the time was if the guitars were playing a dominant seventh chord, he would uh, he would play those chords on on the bass too. But he, he would or he would please play the notes in them. So he go. Just like he would play an octave, but he would play those sevenths, those minor sevenths in there to accent the chord. You'll hear him do that all the time on that live album. Those sorts of things. Um, as far as like what what scales he would use in his playing, he used a lot of minor pentatonic and you, you see this riff that, and this this shape which is you see it, like hundreds of bass players use that shape. All of my favorite bass players, um, when, when you study them, they 
somewhere in their music, they're using that shape. I think, you know, uh, I probably first learned it from um, uh, John Paul Jones. Um, but, you know, all of my favorite players, bass players, Flea and Mars Cowling, all use that shape. So you'll see a lot of minor pentatonics. The other thing you see, he uses a lot of the Mixolydian scale. Of course, that really goes over uh, down to seventh chords, and, and you can do different things with that. Um, he would a lot of times also play, rather than play the root of the chord, he would play the fifth of the chord, which is another really, you know, so instead of playing A, he'd play E over the A, which really gives, it, it emphasizes a different part of the chord. So it's, a, it's another interesting idea that I picked up from him when I was younger that I immediately tried to incorporate into my playing. So whenever I would play with somebody, I would always, like, you know, I'd find out what chords they were on, and I would try to substitute some of those chord tones rather than the root notes. And that was directly influenced through him. So I guess, basically, I, I, this, is, this video is more to encourage you to check this guy out. He's a, he's a really cool player. Um, really underrated, and uh, just, to me, he's the quintessential rock bass player. So, thank you very much for watching.